Hey, I'm Adam Jusko from ProudMoney.com and in this video we are going to talk about which credit card companies give the highest credit lines and we're sort of going to talk about who gives the lowest credit lines too because if we are going to rank them then that's sort of going to come out in the wash. But before we do that, I'm going to ask you to please subscribe to this YouTube channel if you have not already and if you have already, I thank you for doing so. So we're going to look at the uh, companies that give the highest credit lines and this is a very inexact science for two reasons. Number one, everyone is going to get a sort of different credit line based on their own credit history and every credit card company sort of has its own um, uh, strategies in terms of who they give credit lines to and why. So sometimes somebody with a, uh, you know, maybe better credit score and a better credit history might actually get a lower credit line from certain companies if those companies would rather have people who are a little more in the middle and maybe are more prone to carrying balances and all that sort of thing. So it is not, uh, you know, just if your credit score is high, you're going to get the highest. And if your credit score is lower, you're going to get necessarily a lower score. So there is some of that that comes into play. And then the second point is that some credit card companies tend to give a lot up front. So you apply and they're going to give you that big credit line and that's kind of it. Where with other credit card companies, they like to give you a little bit less upfront and then they kind of see how you use the card and then they may give you credit line increases very quickly after that. So the credit card company that has been the most generous to me I would say is Chase. I have three Chase cards between the three. I have over $50,000 uh, in available credit. One of those cards I believe is up over uh, $20,000 and all of those are you know the um, uh, credit lines that I was given right up front. Front. So I can't think of any time that I've gotten a credit line increase from Chase. I just know, and not just what I have now in history as well, when I've gotten a new card from Chase, it almost always has a very high credit line. So, uh, you know, most of the time I'm getting over 10,000, sometimes over 15,000 when I've gotten new credit lines from Chase. This may not be a surprise uh, to some people that have dealt with them. We tend to think of Chase giving high credit lines on their uh, you know, higher end cards, the Chase Sapphire Reserve in particular, you have to uh, qualify for at least $10,000 uh, in a credit line to even get that card. But you know, I have the Chase Freedom card that actually has a higher credit line than any of the other Chase cards I have. So uh, it is not necessarily always going to be you know, that high end card that is going to give you that highest credit line. But overall, Chase has been the most generous haven't really seen credit line increases from them, but big credit limits up front. Now for me, I'm gonna rank American Express number two here in terms of the credit lines that they give. I know some people probably would put American Express at number one, partially because American Express has charge cards that at times give you almost no credit limit. Uh, you know, they say you don't have a credit limit, but there still is sort of a soft credit limit that goes, like if you suddenly charge $50,000, they may pull the reins on you. But American Express tends to deal with a lot of higher end customers, so yes, they definitely do give some high credit lines. In terms of their credit cards that uh, you, know, you can revolve a balance on, I don't think they're necessarily as generous as Chase on those types of cards in terms of what they give you when you are first approved. Some people have said to me that uh, their experience with American Express has been that they really go up quickly. So they may start you a little bit lower, but they will really increase your credit line, especially if you are using the cards on a regular basis. I have a little less experience with American Express than Chase, so I don't uh, you know, have that experience as much. I would love to hear uh, you know, what your take is on that if you have dealt with American Express widely. Number three for me is Capital One. At least that's where I put them. I have actually had different experiences with Capital One depending on which cards I have had. Now my single biggest credit line is a Capital One card. I got the Saver Rewards card last year with a $30,000 credit line right out of the gate. So that was kind of surprising to me because I didn't have a ton of experience with Capital One, or at least not a ton of recent experience with Capital One. So I think maybe with a higher end card and also having a good credit score, they were very generous with me. Some people uh, don't necessarily have that same experience with Capital One, and my previous, previous experiences with Capital One were not necessarily quite as generous either. So I think they obviously can be very generous if you have very good credit 
If you are someone uh, a little further down on the credit scale, you may not qualify for their cards for excellent credit, and you may be seeing smaller credit lines as well, which obviously is true of every issuer, but I don't think Capital One is quite as generous as Chase and American Express are but I think they are more generous than a, uh, a lot of the other issuers out there. Tied in the number four spot would be Citibank and Bank of America. Based on my experience, neither one of these companies is going to wow you with the initial credit line that you get from them, but both of them are going to be generous enough that you don't feel like you've been shortchanged. At least that has been my experience. Now, just a shade below those two companies, I would call another tie, and that is between Barclays and Wells Fargo. I have to admit, I don't have a ton of experience with Wells Fargo. The experience I do have is okay credit lines, but not anything ridiculous, so not anything overly surprising when I got a card from them. Barclays, I have a couple cards from them, the, almost the exact same credit line on both of those cards, which is interesting to me. Barclays has a little bit of a reputation of uh, really looking closely at your card activity. So I'm sure they look closely at your uh, credit history when you get new cards and it seems like they also are quick to jump on you if there are any reasons that they may believe that your credit profile has changed for the worse. They're not necessarily you know, jumping out there trying to give you more credit, but they might be uh, more likely than some other companies to scale back your credit if there's an issue. And then the credit card company I would put at the bottom of the rung is Discover. Now, some people have different experiences with Discover than I have had. I think I am not their target customer. So I got the Discover at Miles card earlier this year. They started me out with a credit line of only $3,600. Now, if you didn't have much of a credit history, $3,600 might sound like plenty to you. But with my credit history, I'm used to getting, uh, you know, at least nine, ten, eleven thousand when I get a new credit card. So that was very small in comparison to other credit card companies that I have dealt with. Now, I think if you are Discover's target customer, maybe somebody that doesn't have as long of a history and who they believe is going to make Discover, uh, you know, sort of their number one card and show some loyalty to Discover, you can actually get those credit lines to go up very quickly and maybe even get a little more upfront. I think Discover probably looked at me and said, this guy's got a lot of cards. He's probably not going to use our card a ton. We'll make him sort of prove it before we give him any more of a credit line. So I know some people have very high credit lines from Discover. For me, they are sort of the bottom of the barrel. So I would be interested to hear what your experience has been uh, with Discover, especially in terms of how it compares to other credit card companies you've dealt with. Now, I know what you're saying. You're saying, well, what about this bank? And what about this bank? And what about this bank? Well, those are the banks that I have dealt with, and I really have anything uh, you know noteworthy to sort of tell you about. If you have experience with other ones, I would love to hear it. One bank in particular that I have not dealt with is U.S. Bank. So I've not had any U.S. Bank credit cards, even though I constantly am talking about how good their Cash Plus card is. I actually do not have that card myself, although it is on my list to get. But anyway, I don't have any experience with U.S. Bank, so nothing to share there. If you have experience, I would love to hear it, especially as uh, you know how it relates to other credit card companies out there. I will tell you in another note here that in terms of the Apple card, which is issued by Goldman Sachs, got a uh, $9,000 credit limit from them, which uh, was, I considered fairly generous considering the fact that I had gotten a lot of credit cards previous to that in the you know past six months. I know some people got even higher credit lines from Goldman Sachs for the new Apple card. So that one I'd probably put kind of right in the middle if I was ranking it with the other ones out there. In terms of other issuers, I don't have any experience with the major credit unions like Navy Federal Credit Union or Pentagon Federal Credit Union. Don't have any experience with USAA. It's been a long time since I've had any experience with Synchrony Bank. So if you have dealt with them on the PayPal cashback MasterCard or maybe some other major credit card. I'd be interested to hear what kind of credit lines you have seen from them and how those compare to any other issuers that you have dealt with. Any other issuers that are regional or whatever, would love to hear that as well.
So that's it, like I said, pretty unscientific here. Most of this is just kind of coming from my own experiences and experiences that I am aware of from other people, some of which I've seen online, some of which I know from other people personally. Would love to hear what your experience has been because everyone's experience obviously is going to be a little different based on their credit history, how old they are, etc., etc., etc. So please put it all in the comment section below. Would love to have more of a discussion about this. Thank you for watching. And as always, please go to ProudMoney.com where we do credit card reviews, talk personal finance, we talk deals and all sorts of other fun stuff too. Thanks for watching. Bye.